Good evening everybody, it's your boy Max hosting the Black Jersey once again, and I'm going to be reviewing the 19th Bledisloe Cup year in a row win. How good was that? 57-22, to massive margin of victory for the All Blacks. I for one thought we'd only win by 11 points, but goodness me, that was definitely the best performance of the Fost era. It was absolutely amazing, and I'm going to go through the key moments of the match, and also some talking points for us after the match, including the fact that we have now won the trophy 19 years in a row. The scoring got underway very quickly in this match, and the first try was for Rico Ioane, now playing at 13, intercepting Noah Lolisio's pass, and as he said when he celebrated the try, he read that pass like a book. Anton Leonard Brown was unfortunately injured with a knee injury, so Rico got shifted to 13. Sevi Reese got put back to the left wing, and Will Jordan himself returned from injury to go to right wing, and as I will touch on later on, Jordan inevitably scored. The back three were absolute class apart from Damian McKenzie who got targeted quite a lot and Jordan has now scored 10 tries for the All Blacks. Unfortunately though, it was the Wallabies back three scoring the next try. It was an Andrew Callaway try in the seventh minute. Um, quite a poor missed tackle by Damian McKenzie. Callaway gave a bit of an inside step to get that first try for the Wallabies so the score is now 7-5 to five because of a missed kick by Noah Lollisi unfortunately. The game was very scrappy in the first half unfortunately so there really wasn't a lot of scoring. Um, I will touch on probably the worst thing to happen but before that um, Brody Retallick ended up getting a try. Um, I've probably been a wee bit critical of Retallick in his return to New Zealand because recently he has been incredibly injury prone and he's not looking as muscular as he used to be but he did a really good support line for Akira Ioane and Damian McKinney. Yuani ran about 40 meters before passing to McKenzie, who then gave Retallick the try assist. And as usual, he gave us the old devil horns. What a beauty of a try. Now the incident we're going to talk about happened shortly after this try. Um, I unfortunately could not get any footage to show you guys, but it is very bad news for Marika Koroi Betty. Koroi Betty in his previous match for the Wallabies did get a red card. A lot of people were saying that was unjustified, but by golly, this incident was absolutely justified and it should have been a red. <clears throat> the fact that no one even did anything was quite concerning to me. Um, he came in at David Havili with a head high shoulder charge and that was completely unacceptable. Not even the TMO chose to review that so I'm quite disappointed about that. So um, apart from this, yeah, the game was pretty good. Um, there was some more scoring in the first half though, Noel Olisio kicking a penalty in the 30th minute, and only two minutes later we made quite a lot of ground, Artie Savia getting the try thanks to Cody Taylor helping him push over after only a 3 metre pick and go. The Wallabies got a few more points as well to finish the half off. Um, Tate McDermott looks to be quite a lively halfback, especially for a young guy. Um, Tate McDermott crossed over in the 40th minute, and Dalton Papali'i had quite a bit of a shocking missed tackle, unfortunately, so probably not the best thing for Papali'i. Um, after the game as well, a lot of people were giving Papali'i a bit of grief, but guys, um, there is a bit of context to look into with Dalton Papali'i. First off, this young fella is only 23 years old. Prior to the Foster era, um, based on date of birth, he was the youngest ever All Black. So even though he first got capped in 2018, he is still a very young man. So mistakes are going to happen. And the thing is, the guy did actually make 17 tackles and his tackle percentage rate was 80 something percent as you can see on screen. So the guy didn't actually do as bad as a lot of people would think so. Um, I was thinking Luke Jacobson was going to get quite a lot of minutes at number 8 in Sam Kane's absence. But for tactical reasons they've obviously chosen to go for Papali'i instead and I think it's been really wise. Um, so yeah, just get this guy minutes while Kane's out injured, because once Kane's back, Jacobson's still going to be coming off the bench a lot, because he covers all three loose positions. Speaking of the loose forwards, um, Ardi Savia himself did get a yellow card for putting his hands in the ruck when he was um, off his feet in the 42nd minute. Try not too long after that though, it was Cody Taylor's first for the night, excellent 
pick and go by Aaron Smith in his 101st test to give Cody Taylor that fantastic try. Will Jordan was running a pretty good support line too, but the inside man's always the better bet in a scenario like that one. Shortly after Taylor's try too, George Bower came off. And I do want to say our scrum in the first half was, to be honest, completely horrendous. It collapsed about five times. And when big Carl Tuinukawafi came on, it really settled things for us. And the fact that we could get a lot more go forward from the actual forward pack gave the backs a real bit of a hand and we were scoring far more in that second half. Um, shout out to Nepo Laulala and Angus Ta'aval for helping Big Carl with that too, with that scrum comeback. Um, Damien McKenzie, well done to him too, kicked his first ever penalty in the black jersey from 59 metres in the 52nd minute. Not a bloody bad effort there, D-Mac. I know this match review's talking about quite a lot of scoring, but there's more. Sevu Reese was the second All Black to tr get a try of an intercept. This time it was Matt Tamua getting intercepted. Now, Matt Tamua has helped Noah Lolisio quite a lot so far in this game. Yes, um, over the last few years, the Wallabies have had their best bunch of under 20s getting promoted up to the big leagues um, as of late. But Noah Lolisio is definitely um, playing in one of the positions where depth is lacking. So I'm happy Matt Tamua, even though he gave that intercept away like Lolisio himself, has been able to guide him on the field. And um, with guys like Harry Wilson coming through, at least there's a bit of a succession plan going on for the Wallabies. Particularly with Dan McKellar coming in as the assistant coach. I rate that guy's coaching. Now Cody Taylor as well. Gets a second try, as I mentioned before. Taylor's next try was in the 60th minute, right before he was subbed off by our fourth choice hooker, Samasoni Tokiaho. Um, Taylor was powering over the line with Jordan Ulisi hanging off him. I love seeing stuff like that. Speaking of Jordans, only four minutes later, Will Jordan scored a pretty darn good try. So Dalton Papali only made one carry in the game, but boy did it count. He made about five meters, then offloads to Savia, who runs about 50 meters, and Savia gives a great right winger the assist. Artie Savia was on fire, and his player rating definitely would have been higher if it went for that yellow card. As you can see, here's our player ratings for the match. It was so, so good, this match. Only a few more scores. Andrew Calloway got a second try on the 68th minute. Um, Sevier Reese did make the tackle, but wasn't fast enough to stop him scoring. And the final try of the game was in the 82nd minute. David Havili's fourth try for the All Blacks this year. Wicked step in the process, too. Anyway, guys... There's my notes, and there's my match review. So going ahead for the All Blacks, I think we're looking really good ahead of the Rugby Championship. Um, I think there aren't too many concerns apart from that first half scrum. Um, I think the team was absolutely fantastic, and I have no doubts the Wallabies will never win the Bledisloe Cup again, and Tyrell Lomax will be the only Australian to ever win the Bledisloe in the 2020s. Thank you so much for um, viewing this channel, rather, guys. Um, make sure to please subscribe, give this video a like, support on Instagram, Patreon, join the Discord server to have a yarn with us, and I'll talk to you again later, okay, guys? See ya.